Howdy freeze dryers, welcome back to the Live Life Simple Kitchen. We are starting to have a little bit of a nip to the air. And what that means for a lot of freeze dryers, including myself, that means we're moving from harvest time freeze drying into our soups and stews and all those foods that are hearty and just kind of warm your soul when it gets cold out. And today's recipe is just that. We're gonna do some freeze dried cream of mushroom soup, but we're gonna make it homemade. We're not gonna make the, uh, the cream of mushroom soup that comes in the Campbell's soup can and still looks like a Campbell's soup can when it comes out. So let's get cooking. Let's make some freeze dried cream of mushroom soup coming up. So you might be wondering how we can make a cream of mushroom soup that's freeze dried when the main ingredient is heavy whipping cream. We're gonna make a roux and that's a good thickening agent in place of heavy whipping cream. We're also gonna try one of my new favorite substitutions, cashew cream. And even though cashews are a nut and oily and things like that, the other recipes that I've tried with cashew cream seem to be uh, just fine. So like I do many times, I'm gonna try two different versions of this recipe, and it might turn out that both of them just turn out perfectly fine. So my hopes are to get a formula to get the equivalent of one can of rehydrated condensed cream of mushroom soup, so you can add it to recipes or things like that, but you can also just have a rehydration formula as well. A can of Campbell's condensed cream of mushroom soup like this one is about 10 and a half ounces. And then the recipe to make it rehydrated is you add another can of water. That gives you 21 ounces of finished product and 21 ounces kind of converts to about two and a half to 2.6 US cups. So what we need to do is make the equivalent of 2.6 US cups with our homemade version of freeze dried cream and mushroom soup. All right, let's make our cashew cream first. Make sure that you have raw cashews. You don't want roasted cashews, just raw cashews. We're gonna start with a cup of those. If you do not have a high powered blender like a Vitamix or a Ninja or something like that, you're gonna wanna soak these for several hours. You can speed up that process a little bit if you uh, soak them in hot water. And then we're gonna add half of a cup of water to that. And then we're gonna add a couple tablespoons of lemon juice. Followed by two tablespoons of broth. And then a clove of garlic, followed by just a dash of salt. And you can go ahead and leave your broth out. We're gonna need that in a second. We're gonna blend this all together and hopefully end up with about two cups of cashew cream. <laughs> Ideally, you want about two cups to add to your cream and mushroom mixture. And this stuff is gonna end up really thick. Uh, it's replicating a heavy cream. So I'm gonna show you a trick of how to get all of this out of here in a second. But before we do anything else, we need our star of the show, which is gonna be 24 ounces of chopped mushrooms or one pound, eight ounces. And I'm actually gonna dice these just a little bit smaller, I think. These are kinda cut pretty large. And then we're also gonna wanna cut up a couple of onions. Uh, we're gonna get a pot or a saucepan. This recipe ideally will make two medium freeze dryer pans, so you're probably gonna want something pretty large to put this into. And we're gonna add four tablespoons of broth as a, an oil replacement, and we're gonna saute these onions and these mushrooms and just really pull out the flavor in those. And something to keep in mind is the size you are cutting your mushrooms and onions. I really like to uh, take a bite and get a big old mushroom chunk in every single bite when I'm eating cream of mushroom soup. And while those are starting to cook, I wanna show you how to get all of this cashew cream out of here because it does kind of like to stick to the sides and we're gonna end up adding more veggie broth to our pot in a second. So if we just add just a little bit into our cashew cream just to soften all this stuff up and then hit it with the blender again. So we're gonna cook these onions and mushrooms until they're softened up and then we're gonna slowly add our cashew cream in there. But if you're doing the roux, we can do that next. And like I said, it's not a traditional roux. It's actually just uh, milk and flour mixed together. There's no cooking. It will kind of naturally make a roux as we go along here. And if you're planning on using the roux, we're gonna get to that right now. And to make our flour and milk roux, all you need is two cups of milk. I'm using whole milk. Whole milk does just fine freeze drying, but it's a low enough fat content that it, it's still okay for longer term storage. And then you're just gonna wanna add four to six tablespoons of flour to here. 
and then we're gonna we're just gonna whisk it all together and it's gonna thicken up real nice and because you would normally use a heavy whipping cream I would say to err on the side of more flour so I put six tablespoons of flour in here it did thicken it up quite a bit once these are getting soft and starting to brown up we're gonna add five cups of vegetable broth in here real slow before we add the roux because the roux is actually gonna thicken everything up and kind of give you the uh, the cream of mushroom texture and consistency that you're used to. And once you have your five cups of veggie broth in, then we can add our roux, whether that's gonna be a typical milk type roux or you're using cashew cream. Add that in very slowly. Take your heat down to medium. We're gonna cook it um, on medium for about 10 minutes and it's really, it, it should thicken up quite a bit. So while this is cooking for 10 minutes, you're just gonna add a little sage and then a little salt and this should be good to go here. So keep an eye on it, make sure we're not burning. You don't want it to burn to the bottom. And if you want, at this point, if you want it to be thicker, add some more cream or add some more roux. And if you want it thinned out, put a little more water in there. But what I'm hoping for is about 10 and a half cups. That would be the equivalent of four cans of Campbell's soup. I'm actually gonna ladle this onto here so I get an even amount of chunky stuff and that way it's kind of even once it's packaged. I want an even amount of onions, I want an even amount of mushrooms on here. And then I'm gonna pop some tray dividers in here in the four portion configuration. So what this is gonna do is basically two of these is gonna equal a fully rehydrated condensed can of Campbell's soup. Before I freeze these, I wanna measure these or weigh them in grams. This one is 2084 grams. This one's 1884 grams, so a little lighter. And then I'm gonna put lids on these. I'm gonna put them in the deep freeze. And then I'm gonna make my other two trays with the flour and milk roux. And it'll be interesting to see how this compares to the, uh, the flour and milk roux version of this. So the flour and milk roux did just about the same. I actually tried to get it to thicken up a little bit. I added a little bit of extra flour in there and then I also let it cook a little bit longer and then I also uh, let it cool for a while just to see if it would thicken up. So let's get a weight on these trays, see how they compare with the cashew cream. This one's about 2034, real comparable to the other one. This one's about 1986, so all of them are really actually very comparable. So we'll put the roux two on the top. We'll get them all frozen. We'll go to the freeze dryer tomorrow. We're good and frozen. Take a minute to subscribe to Live Life Simple. And while you're there, make sure you click the bell to get notifications. That'll let you know every time we release a video. That's Sundays at 8 a.m. for us. And this recipe, along with uh, many, many more, about 160 other recipes can be found at freezedryingcookbook.com. That's just gonna keep getting better and better every single week. We're uploading new information and recipes uh, as fast as we can. And as always, if you find value in the content we're providing, make sure you let us know, give us a thumbs up. And if you or someone you know is interested in freeze drying, join one of our social media groups. We have a Facebook group, we have a MeWe group, and there's all kinds of helpful folks, very knowledgeable people on there. Tens of thousands of people and hundreds of thousands of threads at this point that you can actually search through using the magnifying glass. You can search keywords and group members and uh, group threads, all kinds of different things. We also do giveaways on there almost weekly and that is possible from us and our affiliate link from Harvest Right. Uh, if you're interested or you're gonna purchase a freeze dryer, please consider using our affiliate link. That provides us a small commission, which we put back into the community. It allows us to make YouTube videos. It allows us to do giveaways in the Facebook group, and it also helps us develop products. For freezedryingsupplies.com, that helps us streamline the whole freeze drying process, and we're trying to make it as easy as it possibly can be. And we actually have some new products coming out soon, so stay tuned for that. And our freeze dried cream and mushroom soup is looking good. We have our two roux on the bottom, and then the two top are the cashew cream. It looks like they didn't get all the way frozen. I only had them in the freezer for like about 10 or 12 hours. Might extend our cycle time just a little bit, but I did make uh, an extra batch for dinner last night using the roux and it was good. We'll see you in a second. All right, we are all done. 34 hours and 16 minutes. We had 29.69 kilowatt hours uh, for our power usage. You can see just a slight difference. 
These ones on the left here were with the cashew cream, and then these are slightly darker. Uh, these are with the flour roux. And I'm gonna go ahead and set these all on the scale just so we can see what or how much water we need to add back in. So this one is 892, 878, 810, and 930. So now that we have a weight, I can figure out our rehydration, uh, how much water we need to put in. I'm gonna bag these up and we will rehydrate these in the freeze drying kitchen. And I did not put parchment down on either one of these and I wanna show you what happens when you don't use parchment. If you tried to get this out with just your fingers, it's sticking to the tray. A lot of soups and stuff that is similar to this will do that. You end up with part of it on the tray still. If it was parchment, it would just peel right off. So if I did my math right, I average everything out. One of these one quarters of a tray, a medium tray, should need about 280 grams of water to rehydrate. I wanna make sure that you realize that rehydration is definitely not an exact science and it really probably never will be, but we can get you real close, uh, plus or minus. And really the more people we get freeze drying and adding information, the, the better we can get at this. I'm starting to put together um, a rehydration chart, just kind of a conversion. Um, and that way we can kind of use some of these videos in the future to help with uh, the rehydration process. So if we take our 280 grams and we convert that into cups, it's one cup plus one eighth of a cup plus one tablespoon. We're gonna see how close that gets us to how it was when we put it into the freeze dryer. So another side note too, this is our cashew cream, which I had a little hesitation to because it is um, a nut which is oily, but actually I don't see any oil at all, so this should have no problem with uh, with longer term storage. The uh, the milk roux did really really well. I think both of them actually um, will work just fine. Okay, so this has been sitting for about five minutes now, and I think the key to this is I thought it was going to be way too watered down when I first put the stuff in, but now that it's sat and I have just continuously stirred this, it's starting to thicken up quite a bit, and I think it's actually a really good consistency, it's exactly how you want it to be. So I think where you're gonna end up is probably somewhere in between one cup and one and a quarter cups for both types, it doesn't matter which type you're gonna do. And this is one serving, which was one fourth of that medium tray. This is our cashew cream, let's test that first. And this, just like every other soup I've ever tried freeze dried, is right on. Our flour roux, it did give you probably more of the traditional cream of mushroom texture, but part of that is also how I prepared it because I had the practice on the cashew cream first. So, so let's try this next. Both of these are really good. I think they rehydrated perfect. They freeze dried perfect. I think these are a winner for long-term storage. These will both go in the cookbook. In the meantime, this is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple. Catch you next week.